Hi, y'all. Welcome to Read Along with S.J. Daisy. Today's book is Marilyn's Monster by Michelle Knudsen, illustrated by Matt Phelan. Now, I got my book from the library. If you can't get to the library, just push the CC and read along with me on closed captioning. Marilyn's Monster by Michelle Knudsen, illustrated by Matt Phelan, and this was put together by Candlewick Press. Marilyn's Monster Some of the kids in Marilyn's class had monsters. It was the latest thing. Marilyn didn't have a monster, not yet. You couldn't just go out and get one. Your monster had to find you. That's just the way it worked. Oh, look at the monsters. Some kids woke up to find their monsters had chosen them while they slept. Some kids got their monsters on the way home from school or on the bus or in the park. Timmy's monster chose him right in the middle of a history test. Look at that. At first, Marilyn wasn't even worried about it. Eventually, her monster would find her too. There were still a bunch of kids who didn't have monsters yet. But then Franklin got his at the library and Rebecca got hers while riding her bike and Lenny got his while he was running away from some mean older kids who kept picking on him. Oh. Nobody picked on Lenny anymore after that. After a while, Marilyn was the only one left without a monster. She knew she wasn't supposed to try to look for him, but she kind of did anyway. She hung around the library hoping she poked around the playground, pretending not to look under the slide and behind the climbing bars. She watched the others with their monsters, playing and laughing and having fun and never being alone. Oh, look at their monsters. At night, when her room was dark and scary. Marilyn thought about how good it would be to have her monster there beside her. We're sure you'll get your monster soon, said her parents. I bet you'll never get one, said her brother. It probably came already and took one look at you and ran the other way. Oh, that's not very nice. Marilyn tried to be patient. She tried to believe her monster was still coming. She made sure she brushed her hair very carefully every morning and wore pretty clothes and smiled a lot and tried to look very friendly and interesting and smart and fun to be around. She tried to be the kind of girl no monster could resist. But at the end of the week, her monster still hadn't come. She was afraid that maybe her brother was right. Maybe I'm better off without a monster, she told her friend, Deborah, at school. They seem like a lot of work. Hmm, said Deborah. She didn't really seem to agree. Maybe your monster's just running late, said Margaret. Maybe it's invisible and it's been here all along and you didn't even notice, said Jerome. 
that night in her room, Marilyn whispered into the scary dark. Are you invisible? Have you really been here all along? But if her monster was there, he didn't say so. Marilyn stopped trying to seem pretty and nice and friendly and fun all the time. She stopped looking around in the library and the playground after school. She started feeling mad. Where was her monster? What was taking him so long? She was so mad, sometimes she thought maybe she really didn't want a monster. What was so great about monsters anyway? Hmm. But they were pretty great. She could see they, that they were. She wanted one more than she could say. Look at that. He gets flung up in the air by his monster. That's it, Marilyn said one morning. I'm going to find my monster. You can't, said her brother. That's not how it works. Maybe, said Marilyn, but you don't really know how. Maybe my monster is different. She put on her good walking shoes and pack of thermos of juice and a peanut butter and banana sandwich. Then she made a second sandwich and put that in her bag too. There she's going. Marilyn went out and started looking. She didn't just kind of look, she really looked. She looked as hard as she could. She searched behind the stone lines that sat outside the library. She checked beneath the benches at the playground and the park. She went down the winding path through the woods and out into the big field with the wildflowers. She didn't see her monster. Marilyn stopped in the middle of the field. She closed her eyes and stood very still. She thought about trying to sing a beautiful song like those princesses in movies did sometimes that made all the little animals come and sit on their shoulders. She thought about trying again to be patient and wait and hope that her monster would find her someday soon. Then she took a deep, deep breath and shouted in her loudest, loudest voice, Where are you? Oh my, she is a little bit mad. And then, very softly, she heard a voice say, Here! <gasps> Marilyn followed the voice. It was very quiet, but she could hear it very clearly. She followed it across the field and into the woods on the other side and over to a tall, tall tree. And there was her monster, half hidden among the leaves. I got lost, her monster said in his small, soft voice. And then I got scared, and then I got stuck. Her monster had two long, lovely wings. They were tangled and caught in the branches. Marilyn climbed up and very gently helped her monster get free. I kept hoping you would come and find me, her monster said. I'm sorry it took so long, Marilyn said back. Then they sat there together and had peanut butter and banana sandwiches and juice. Oh, they were having a picnic in the tree.
When they were ready, Marilyn's monster lifted her up, oh, and flew her all the way back home. Oh, how wonderful to have a monster with wings. Oh, my. Oh, honey, said her parents. Your monster found you at last. We found each other, Marilyn said. She and her monster smiled together. It's not supposed to work that way, her brother said. Marilyn just looked at him. She didn't think he was right about that. She thought there were a lot of different ways that things could work. And that night, when Marilyn went to bed, the dark didn't seem so scary. Marilyn wasn't sad or afraid or lonely. She was happy. Marilyn's monster was too. Oh, look, they're both smiling in their sleep. Oh, what a wonderful story. Marilyn's monster. I'm so glad she found him. He was stuck up in a tree. Hmm, sometimes you gotta go looking for things, don't you? Patience is good, but sometimes determination is also good. Oh, thank you so much for joining me today with Read Along with S.J. Daisy and our very special book, Marilyn's Monster. Bye-bye.